entertaining. And the thing is, you know, the, the beauty to me to watch a race, if you go there to watch one driver and something bad happens to that driver, then what are you going to watch? There is so much going on right now. I mean, whether it's Jimmy Johnson, is he going to make the playoffs? How much bad luck can this guy have? You've got Ryan Newman, who is, who's actually doing pretty outstanding um, in the six car. There's so many stories going on. There's the battle, who's going to be the... Um, the regular season champion, who's going to have the most wins. You know, he's got three drivers with four wins now. There's so much going on all over the track, and that's what I like. You know, I like to see. And, and then you've got Denny Hamlin, who part of him doesn't really want to pass Matt Benedetto, but of course he's going to. You know, and, and you got to understand, Denny Hamlin is a driver that when Matt D didn't have any sponsorship money, Denny Hamlin went on Twitter and said, look, I'm going to get $5,000. Let's keep this guy racing. Denny Hamlin was very influential in keeping Matt out there on the track. This is a guy that's, you know, on an underfunded team that's been struggling, that wants it so bad, and he's proven that he's got the talent on an underfunded team. There is not a doubt in my mind that Matt Benedetto is going to end up on a, on a team, and especially there's some drivers whose contracts are up, and, you know, who knows? But the problem, I see the problem in NASCAR is right now that you have drivers that aren't as good as some of these people that come there with sponsorship dollars. So if you've got a team, you're going to take that driver that's got the sponsor with them rather than the driver that can win your races because it's business. Well, Matt D. Benetetta, you mentioned this, I, I believe, what, what was it? Excuse me, wasn't it Hamlin that actually I think I had heard that he had apologized or something after the race? You mentioned how uh, Hamlin had kept Matt E. D. going. And, uh, I mean, I had heard something about that and all this, so it really was trying to go to the end and the victory at the end of the race. Two competitors, but two also, from what you're telling me, uh, close friends as well, uh, going for the checkered yeah, and, flag. And you, you got to remember, first of all, I mean, if you have a driver that can win a race and he decides not to win a race, then you might as well just, well, that's Formula One. <laughs> I want every driver to do whatever it can to win a race. And we have to remember, it, I think I, I think it's like 14 years Danny Hamlin's been racing in NASCAR. He's never won a championship. And when he wins this race, then he's going to be up there with Martin Church Jr. and Kyle Busch is having four wins. So of course he's going to get the win. And if he didn't, uh, did I want Matt Benedetto to win? Absolutely. Would I have been happy if, he, if Danny let him win? No way. Yeah. I don't want any driver to ever pull over. So Danny Hamlin did the right thing. Yeah, I pulled for. I was playing for Matt, but I think Danny got. And Danny has just commented about Matt so many times. But I think Danny, even though he beat Matt, ended up gaining more fans after that race. Now, by the way, does Jimmy Johnson make it? In your opinion, does he make the playoffs? He's got to win. I mean, he's got to win. We're at Darlington. We're many of the drivers that are on the bubble. And I think Danny, Jimmy Johnson, the only driver to ever win at Darlington that's on the bubble. But that doesn't mean it. I mean. Jimmy Johnson is just, he's just having, you know, he switches crew chiefs. But a lot of it's just bad luck, you know. I mean, I think he ran into the back of Austin Dillon Saturday night. So it really wasn't his fault. I, the only way Jimmy's going to get get it is win, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know. But, you know, we're, we're also going to Darlington and we're going to Indy. And uh, who knows, you know. Two of the premier tracks right there. I do want to ask you this about Johnson. I've asked Jerry Bonkowski, who talks racing with me every week here on Tri-City Sports Now, Ricky Rockman, what your opinion is this. And I've said, is it your opinion that right now Jimmy Johnson is, let's say, 1997 Dale Earnhardt Sr.? Remember, he didn't want to race that year. Or is he post-1983 Richard Petty? What does your gut tell you where Johnson's career is right now? Well, I, I didn't go to the races in 83. Okay. <laughs> did in 97, and I mean, I've got a three tattoo. I was a hardcore Earnhardt fan, and I always stay true to being an Earnhardt fan. And I remember being an Earnhardt fan and people saying, oh, you know, he's past his prime, he's this, that. Who knows? I mean, the thing is, I mean, it, it's not just Jimmy. It's the Chevys, and ugh, I don't know. I mean, I, part of me wants, I, I want Jimmy to come back. I, I don't know if I really ready for him to be the only eight-time champion, but I don't want to see Jimmy go out like this. He's yeah. one of the best drivers in the sport of NASCAR, period. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. I mean, he needs to have something, but, you know, let's remember, you know, I remember when Tony Stewart hadn't won a race, and then I think he won like five of the, of the ten races in the playoffs and won the championship, so you never know. A lot can happen, but he's got to pick it up, and some of it's bad luck. Some of it's just been bad luck.
Oh, tell us about this podcast. I want to listen to it here. I know about Racing Rocks. Tell us about the podcast, Ricky Rockman. I started this podcast six months ago. It's called Cat House Hollywood Podcast. I owned a club in L.A. in the 80s and early 90s, and every band played there. Our, our house band was Guns N' Roses. We had all these insane things happening, like Axel chasing David Bowie down the street, or <laughs> Motley Crue fighter, all these just crazy things. And what we do is we tell stories about the club, and we have guests on telling stories about the Los Angeles scene. You know, two uh, months ago we had Tom Morello from Rage Gets Machine telling stories about Hollywood in that era. So it's all been, you know, really great guests and telling stories about the, the rock and roll scene from people that were there, not from reporters or journalists. But then, you know, everybody was always asking me why I never talk about the Headbangers Ball, which was the show I hosted mm -hmm. from 90 to 95 on MTV. So I said, okay, I'm going to make a special about the Headbangers Ball. And it's all about the Headbangers Ball. It's on iTunes free. It's all over the Internet. You know, you can go, go to cathousehollywood.com to download it. And this episode is an hour and a half me talking about, you know, the origin of the word headbanger and headbangers ball and, you know, the bands. You know, a lot of people don't know that much history about that show. And it's just, it, it's really cool that, that so many people are really digging because the show is doing really, really well. And this is something that, you know, I write, record, and edit by myself. So it's neat that it's doing so well. I watched it religiously not only when you hosted, but when Adam Curry hosted. That was the well, big thing. About that yeah, too. that was and the also, big. Also, um, I'm going to be. I'll be at Darlington and Dover. Okay. Both those I'm doing. I'm doing driver introductions for Darlington because the cool thing about the Darlington throwback this time is '90 to '94, which was the years that I was on Headbangers Ball. So it's going to be fun to be at, at, at Darlington, and you know, I, I love the throwback weekend. I love the tank skis. It'll be great to see Dale Jr. back in the booth, you know. It's just going to be great. Just like Bristol, Darlington seems to be in everybody's top five tracks and all this. I hate that they only run there once a year and all that. It's a little bit of that uh, old South Carolinian in me as well. He's a new North Carolinian. He's Ricky Rockman. I love this. I got a cat house Hollywood. When you guys are going at it, uh, your club against the Whiskey A Go Go back in the day. I got to hear about that. So I'm going to listen to that podcast. Listen to Ricky on Racing Rocks. And we'll be back after this on Tri City Sports Now.